The idea of a jousting game has always sounded great in theory to me. Two riders charging toward each other, aiming to knock someone off with a big pointy stick sounds like fun. But any sort of deeper analysis does make the problems apparent. It will probably become repetitive, the gameplay would perhaps be too simplistic, and it's easy to imagine people getting bored of the concept far too quickly. But the hope of seeing a proper jousting game has never really gone away. A good jousting game sounds like a blast, even for a short while. And then Jousting Manager fell into my lap and it sort of gave me what I wanted. I'd wanted a first-person jousting game where I can knock people off horses and break lances in their faces. And although Jousting Manager does offer this somewhat, it's completely different, but not in a bad way. This video will be going over what I like about it, what I dislike, and some feedback that the developer can either take or leave. But before we get into all of that, I'd like to thank my Ko-Fi supporters for being more awesome than Bioware re-releasing Dragon Age Veilguard as Dragon Age Dreadwolf and telling the story we'd all been looking forward to for 10 years and not the crap that we have. I'm not sad. Let's get into it. Let's first cover the very basics. What is jousting exactly? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it is a combat on horseback between two knights with lances, especially as part of a tournament. You are riding towards each other with lances and trying to either break the lance or knock them off the horse. In very brief. The original name for jousting was actually tilting, named after the barrier between the riders who were charging at each other with lances. But overall, jousting has become the official name for the sport. However, this means that technically the name should be Tilting Manager, but that sounds like a terrible title for the captain of the Titanic. Although, in fairness, he did do that job a lot of justice. Now, in Jousting Manager, we are not actually playing as a jouster. We are playing as a manager for a team of jousters who are possibly insane. We have a team of at most 10 riders and our goal, it appears, is to be very glorious and win many a tournament. And the way you do that is by ensuring these idiots don't break glasses, don't meet black cats, don't get into arguments, and ensure they actually get their training done in a timely fashion, which doesn't always work and ends up with people bitching in my inbox. The game begins on a rather medieval menu screen, and I mean that in the thematic way, not in the dated way, and takes us to the flag creation for our jousting club. Although it's only a symbol, there are a lot of options to choose from and I spent a good amount of time designing my flag and colors. I named my club the Squeakers, chose the mostest, brightest colorsist, and off I went into the game. The developer sends you your first message in your inbox, which explains a little about how to activate the tutorial and also thanks you for trusting him with his game. This was too damn sweet. The way to trigger the tutorial is by simply clicking on the different menus in-game. I go into the first menu and no tutorial pops up. I go into the next menu and no tutorial pops up. No tutorial will pop up for some time because I forgot I'd already played the game some time ago in the demo and I had unticked the tutorial box, so I ended up restarting the game, misspelling squeakers, redesigning my flag, and here we are with a tutorial two hours in with a team called the Squeakers and a flag that looks actually half decent. Disappointed! A huge part of the game will be spent in menus where you will be training jousters, taking care of horses, getting news about your jousters, getting new jousters, upgrading your gear, entering tournaments and checking to see which of your riders are possibly dying, injured or who do you want to fire. Fun times! But to train your riders, you will have to understand what exactly it is you're training. And there's a lot. Your jousters have a few attributes. Determination, bravery, ride, lance technique, strength, precision, hit resistance, recovery and bow. Each of these will have a different effect on the rider during a joust. Determination and bravery will heighten their chance for striking true and hard, whereas precision will make it easier to hit the target. This becomes particularly important in the Quintain and Throw the Board competitions, which are sprinkled in between the jousts. We'll get into those a little bit later, but for now let's just establish exactly what all these attributes do. Lance technique will determine how well your rider wields the last and how much wood they can handle. Insert juvenile giggle here. Strength determines how hard your rider strikes, hit resistance and ride will determine how well your rider is seated and how likely they are to be unhorsed, which is hilarious. Bonk. Recovery determines how fast your rider recovers from injuries and finally the bow is a separate skill specifically aimed at how well they can, well, aim. And this is in the end of the attributes. Ability, potential, age, fitness, morale and condition are more things to consider and each of these determine how well your rider will perform. 
The horse and squires will also have an effect on performance, with squires helping the rider dress, and if the horse's condition is poor, the rider could also perform poorly. Suffice it to say, there's a lot going on here, but the main objective is to keep your riders happy, healthy, fit, and well-trained. Despite having so many attributes, the training is actually very simple. You select a couch, select the riders you want to train under that couch, and then you select the percentages of what you want to train. The more you add, the more grueling the training will be, the more effective it will be, but also you have a chance of harming morale and causing injury. You want your little riders to get good at gripping their wood, but we don't want them to get a splinter. Insert juvenile giggle here. Something else to consider is that the more riders a trainer has on their plate, the less effective their training will also be, and if their injuries are pretty severe, they'll end up at the doctor's recovery. This can take multiple weeks to clear up, so be careful in that regard as each rider will only stay with you for a short time, as they are all actually under a contract. The only thing that really bugged me about the training is that I couldn't remove riders from the training board. Even when my riders were injured, they were still on the training group. This made me concerned that they weren't actually recovering. And this means that I had people that I really wanted to train hard, but because my injured riders were still stuck in the training, I didn't know if I could up the training and potentially injure them further. It's a small thing, but it really bugged me. Just let me remove riders from training. It's, it's a sort of mental thing, out of sight, out of mind. However, my favorite part about the training was the delicious flavor text and feedback. Some of the riders would receive injuries or would have commentary about training. This is one I got a lot. Gerlixi Mathilde has complained about the intensity of the training, wondering why we subject her to this inhumane torture, and why we don't reduce the intensity to a level suitable for mere humans. These little flavor texts also extended to events throughout the week. A rider could drop a glass, which would be a bad omen, and would affect their morale, or they would drop a penny in a well to gain a boost in morale. These small instances made the riders feel a bit more alive than just basic faces slapped onto a screen. I hope that a larger variety is added that includes the horses and perhaps even arguments between the riders, as the flavor text does hint at some personality to be found. Here are a few gems from the riders' personalities. She is not very responsible. Don't entrust her with anything important. Limited ingenuity. Although their heart is as big as their sword, their ability to understand the simplest situations sometimes leaves much to be desired. He's really repulsive, it's hard to be around him. Fear of horses. The knight's irrational fear of horses is known worldwide, but they have armed themselves with courage to overcome it, for now. He doesn't seem capable of putting on his shoes by himself. The poor guy has had to take a lot of hits. The flavor text is hilarious and an absolute highlight of the game. Even the horses have some flavor text, but it is sorely lacking at this point. And uh, just a quick thought I want to shove in here. Seeing as the game is an early access, the developer could very well ask of their players to come up with some ideas for flavor text. It would get the community involved and maybe some really original ideas can come up. Now, speaking of horses, you can also train horses. Horses have many of the same attributes as the rider, and much like the rider, they each affect the horse in different ways. You can train them at the stables by selecting what you'd like to train, and then just going to the next week. I haven't seen any horse injuries or issues, but I would love to see some for the rest of the game, as it would add more depth. I would also like to see some faces for the horses, as there are for the riders. It would give them a bit more personality and would make it more adorable. Another point that bugged me is that all the horse models are currently white. But this could be a placeholder horse for the time being, but I do hope we see more code variations soon. The last two major points I'll discuss are the Armory and Team B. The Armory allows you to upgrade your tack and make new tack. This will affect the rider's seat and the damage done by lances and the accuracy of your bow. You can only upgrade four pieces per week and you can't upgrade in the same line. Not exactly sure how that works, but thems be the rules. This is also a good point to mention that your staff's morale also dips. I learned that by switching out my blacksmiths and so I was able to keep morale high by giving them a rest. This one's morale went up to 114, so whenever she's making, she's enjoying the f*** out of it. But I have absolutely no idea how to raise the morale of my doctors. So they're probably going to turn into a medieval serial killer at some point and get burned at the stake as a werewolf. I'm sort of looking forward to that. Team B is your backup team. They are all pages and squires. Every jouster will need a squire and a horse to be able to compete. You can, if you want, promote one of your squires to jouster by assigning them a page and a horse. 
I had to fire one of my jousters because he was probably the unluckiest son of a bitch in Ireland. Did you step on a leprechaun, you daft bastard? Point is, there is a lot to this game, and even a lot more that I haven't mentioned. You have the calendar where you can sign up to tournaments, you can upgrade facilities which makes them more effective, and you can scout out for new staff or riders, you just have to get a good reputation with them. It's a huge game with a lot of detail and all the details makes it feel organic and lively. There's a lot to the game and we haven't even touched the actual jousts yet, which we should probably get into now. Unlike the management aspect, this part of the game is 3D. I'll chat about the visual in a bit, but for now I will say that this has always been a great way to break up the endless menus of management games. Starter's Orders and the upcoming Horse Racing Manager both implement the same style. One part is made up of menus, the other shows the sport in action. But here it's a little different. Although you don't directly control the rider, you have a lot of influence on their riding. You're going to choose their speed, lance, where to aim and how to ride. The point of the contest is to accumulate points by breaking your lance, breaking your lance on your opponent's face, or knocking him off his horse. Bonk! Yeah! You do this by adjusting all of this. There's a lot going on on this screen, so let's break it down. On the top left we have the rider's skill, their equipment and their horse's skill. On the far right we have the modifiers. This includes the armor rating, the saddle rating, the weather and the troubadour's inspiration. D&D knockoff confirmed. The troubadour can be seen at the start of each joust, where they play on the stage and inspire the crowds to support you. This is a really, really damn cute touch, and I hope they'll be expanded to make them feel less like something just tacked on, which is exactly what they feel like now. They're a great concept but not fully realized, and my troubadour is getting a bit twitchy because I keep dragging the poor bastard out to tournaments, and I got no idea how to switch him out, and I'm honestly getting worried that he's going to turn into the next Cacophonix. <laughs> On the center right we have your opponent's statistics and this is where my biggest issue with the menu came in. From the very start I thought that the right was my information and left was my opponent's. I thought this for a few reasons. Firstly, because it was a different color. It stood out more. Secondly, because it was on the right. It felt natural to look at that menu as my information because it was open and convenient to look at. And finally, because I am on the right of the fence and my opponent is on the left, I thought that the right menu was my menu. This needs to be addressed. The menus overall don't feel very well designed. They're not very intuitive. They often feel like information overload. Designing menus is a difficult thing and I don't want to say that the menus are terrible. They're just not very intuitive. So they just need a bit more polish in my opinion. Now the part you're going to be focusing on the most is the bottom left. Here you can select, for example, the speed of your horse. The faster you run, the harder you hit, the less firmly you sit and the more tired your horse gets. The lance length has a few attributes. Each of these affect how easily the lance breaks and how easy it is to control. The taller your rider, the shorter the lance they require, as the longer your reach, the more likely you will strike first, which will give you an advantage. But if the lance is too long, it could become unruly and difficult to control, so you will have to find this balance. Then you decide on where you will aim. I suggest aiming for the shield at first just to land those hits, but aiming for the head is not only the most effective, but is hilarious, especially when this happens. Bonk! Yeah! The final part is how your rider is going to be while well, riding. I won't go over all of them, but suffice it to say, you have a few selections here like stay, which will mean you won't hit hard, but you will stay seated, and strong knock, meaning you won't stay seated, but you will beat the crap out of your opponent, and tis glorious. The best part of the tournament is you have about 5 rounds per joust. Each of these rounds you can adjust and readjust your rider to ensure they either land or stay or hit or whatever. A good idea is to keep an eye on the horse and rider's energy and morale. The lower it is, the higher your chance of this happening. Everybody do the flop! <laughs> Please just stay in this. <laughs> There's a lot of strategy and enjoyment here in the game, and it does keep the joust interesting, especially since the opponents keep shifting throughout the tournament. You will have a total minimum of three jousts and a maximum of five if you get to the quarter and semi-finals. In between, you have a few other sports that are really simplistic and just a basic adjuster, but for some reason the bow competition just disappeared from my game. It shows that it did happen, 
but I never take part anymore. I have no idea why this is happening and I would like to have an explanation. But overall, the jousts are a lot of fun. It did get very repetitive after a while, so I would suggest something to give the jousts and competitions more value or more stakes, but it's still early access, so we can certainly wait and see. But let's get into the visual. To be quite frank, the visual is not really appealing. The menus, although I love the inspiration from the medieval times, I think needs a bit more vibrancy to make it more appealing and fun to scroll through. Most of your time is going to be spent in the menus, and this has to be something you want to be in. As for the jousting itself, the graphics just aren't pretty. I wish they would get a more stylistic style, as this would make the game stand out more, and would also make it easier to appreciate. Going for a realistic style means people are going to be judging the graphics much harder, because it's a lot easier to see the faults in the design. Stylistic avoids this problem, plus it doesn't age as quickly. Another issue is the fact that all the horses are white. I would like to see some different coats or even breeds, perhaps courses, charges and rounces, the medieval type horses that existed in that time. Some more graphics on the horse menus in general would also be a nice touch. Without horses, there would not be much of a joust, and a bit more attention to them could do wonders. Another thing to consider are more camera angles of the jousts. I think this could bring a nice element to the game and make it feel a bit more dramatic, especially seeing as we don't actually control the horse. First person, side view, spectator view, or even opponent view would help a lot to make the jousts a bit more versatile. The visual is not great by any stretch of the imaginations, but it's still early days, so it could still change. But a few touch-ups here and there could do wonders for the game as it stands now. But seeing as the game is an early access, I'll give my feedback here in a nice neat bow. Firstly, a better tutorial. A more informative and step-by-step -step tutorial that explains all the nitty-gritty. Having the nuanced information will make the experience more in-depth and fun to play. A practice tournament as a separate tutorial would help a lot. Let us go through each of the menus in detail and help us understand everything from the ground up. More control of our riders would help a lot as well. The point of management games is to be able to make refined choices and have full control of your teams. I want to be able to remove them from training, decide on who goes to the doctor and who has to just suck it up for now and who needs to get paid more. If I need to put down a horse or change the instruments of my troubadours. Of course, having too much choice can hinder the experience, but at the very least, let me remove riders from training. Give more love and visual to the menus. A small map of your facilities and showing how they are being upgraded would make a huge difference. Perhaps a picture showing the broken glass or a black cat. Small things to make the menu part feel more visually interesting and flavorful. And speaking of flavor, add more flavor text and happenings. I'd really like to see horse injuries and more things that happen to my riders. They could fall in love, anger the local butcher, get a black eye, pick up a disease, get kicked by their mount for being an ass, break their collarbone while walking down to the local brothel. There's a lot you can add here, and it could really add to the fun of managing these rather peculiar riders. The tongue-in-cheek aspect is brilliant, I just think it needs to be cranked up a bit more. I'll refrain from talking about the visual again, as this is a far larger thing that needs to be added and changed, but I would ask for more maps. A wider selection of maps would also help keep the tournaments fresh and interesting. Deserts, surrounding forests, lakes, castles, anything to keep the visual versatile. Something else to consider are events during the tournament. Like a lover could come to spectate one of the riders, giving them a morale or energy boost. Or a mother-in-law yelled in their ear, making them deaf on the one side. These small events could also serve to keep the jousting interesting. Perhaps not all the time, but from time to time. But these are of course just my thoughts. I don't expect the creator to add all of this, but perhaps it might inspire better and even more interesting ideas. In closing, I really do like this game. I love the intricacies and detail, but I've always been a sucker for management games. And I also love the silly humor peppered throughout. There is a lot you can do here, a lot to enjoy, and I hope the game grows into something truly special. Bonk!